I'm here with Mother Maureen, the administrator and um, chief honcho here at Little Sisters of the Poor on Highland Avenue in Somerville. Thank you so much for having us into your home. And thank you for having us coming to see us, Joe. We're going to celebrate, um, I understand that we're all going to celebrate the 150th anniversary of St. Jean Jugan coming to the Americas. Well, it's not St. Jean Jugan that came, she remained in the mother house. In France. In France. My apologies, yeah. We had seven little sisters who came over from France on September 13, September 13th, 1868, and landed in New York. And uh, only two of them could speak English, but the work has just grown and grown because of the beginnings. And then the house here in Somerville was established? In 1889. We came to Boston in 1870, but they didn't come to Somerville until 1889. And a beautiful piece of land. We're going to be doing a little bit of a tour later on, speaking to some of the residents, speaking to some of the other folks who staff here. Mm -hmm. You have a little bit over a hundred residents. That's correct. And so, Mother Maureen, why don't you tell us, you know, basically what the structure is up here. Really? Well, first of all, I like to say that uh, we're happy and blessed to welcome our residents at the threshold of our front door and to prepare them for the threshold of eternity. And there's so much that goes on between the threshold of the front door and eternity. We have a lot of fun. We have spiritual lives that, we, um, that bear fruit every day. We share our joys and our sorrows. We little sisters gain so much from our residents. They, they have so much to share with us. They're, the wisdom of their their lives we have the spiritual we have mass every day we every week they the residents with our chaplain father pat and our resident priest father joe they have a scripture sharing every thursday and i'll be happy to take you to see that we have um the art room where our residents can express themselves in art they can bake if they like to they we have sing-alongs we have parties they can run the stores if they like to do that. They can take part in the singing and the reading in the chapel. Uh, we have wonderful food here too. We have a wonderful food service supervisor. And plus we have the medical, the doctors that come, therapy company, and it's just the socialization of and family. That, that's so important for us. That, that philosophy, that spirit that our mother founder, St. Jean Jugan, taught all of us, that it's, it's our we're really based on what a family really is. And the goal of the organization, though, is to take care of the poor. That's right. From, from the minute they walk in the door mm -hmm. until the minute that they give up this earthly life. That's right. So you're, you're morphed into kind of this organization that is no longer just about helping poor, but providing dignity and respect, That's right. sometimes at the end of life. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, the little sisters will watch and remain with the residents as they prepare for eternity, those sometimes hours, sometimes weeks, sometimes a long while, and support the family. Families here are very important too. We have wonderful families who participate in the care and the and, um, everyday life for our residents. And so uh, we do have a resident in the process of dying right now, and their family is upstairs. Uh, praying and, and sharing. It's reminiscing, it's singing, it's praying together, it's supporting one another at a very critical time of our lives. You arrived in 2015. That's right. And what's your first impression of the Somerville community? Oh, it's wonderful and it remains the same. I actually, I'm dating myself, but I was a postulant here in the old home. And now this new home is was built in 1978. And so it, it's still the same spirit. The old home had dormitories, but that's where I found my vocation, to be a little sister. That spirit of family that surpasses 
the decor. You know, that, that they, the little sisters cared deeply about uh, the residents, and they still do. We still do. Well, as I joked with you before we started taping, I'm going to put my name on the list down <laughs> here for when I'm ready. We'll but be happy. The organization has been a, a mainstay of um, Somerville for many, many years. Your reaction to um, how, you know, homes like this or residences or facilities like this, most recently we're going to be losing the Somerville home here in Somerville, Massachusetts. Your organization, though, is thriving. From what I can tell, it's mm -hmm. thriving. Could you talk a little bit about how you support yourselves in the funding that you yes. go through? We have a little sister who goes out and what we call her the beggar, and she's our fundraiser who goes to the churches, and, and there's many, many donors. We go to the market every week. Sister can tell you all about that. And all the different people that support us, we could never survive on what we receive from this from the state. And we're going to be speaking to her a little bit that's later right, in the interview, right. but that's terrific. So Medicaid, Medicare, that kind of covers not all Part the costs. Right. I'd say 60-40, uh, you know, right. we so really do need the 40% in order to run our home. You're and the, very and the way we do. Yeah, yeah. I know that uh, former Mayor Gene Brune is going to be joining us in a little bit. He's going to be talking about, you know, some of the efforts that are done through your advisory committee, your advisory board in terms of assisting, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to start highlighting some of the activities here, mm -hmm. some of the uh, residents. I know they're waiting for us too. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, I'm going to have you back a little bit more in the, later in the interview. Okay. Thank you very much, Chuck. Mother Maureen, thanks. We'll see you soon. joined by one of my favorite people and I'm sure he's one of yours. Yes. Former Mayor Jean Brune who is on the advisory board here at Little Sisters of the Poor. Tell us how important it is to have somebody with Jean's stature in this city to be associated with you. Well actually Jean just uh, accepted to be the head of our advisory board and Jean is, first of all we love Jean, Mr. Somerville and he cares so much about us that it's so obvious and he can outreach to many people and help us in so many ways and he surely does. He has many friends and he helps us a great deal. Jean, I think that's kind of a pass into heaven that you're getting the imprimatur right there. Tell us how you got associated with the Little Sisters. Well, I've, been, I've always been a friend of the Little Sisters and worked with the Little Sisters when I was an alderman and certainly when I was mayor. I came here so many times to bring flowers to someone having their 100th birthday party or the 101st. Uh, I was one of the judges for their, for their uh, Mardi Gras uh, every year. And so I'm, I wasn't new to the Little Sisters. So about 15 years ago, when the Little Sisters had really serious financial problems, they decided to put together an advisory board. And I was a part of the advisory board, and it's made up of about 20 individuals from all parts of Massachusetts that have feelings for the home. And we each, I think, had our own private story about why we love this home. And there's something about this home that once you're drawn into it, there's no getting out. Because it's just magical. When you see the way the little sisters give of their time and their effort and their dedication, to the elderly and the poor. And you know, when I was mayor, I always said I had two priorities, the children and the elderly. And I've kept that promise and I've been doing it uh, ever since and I still do it today. So it wasn't hard for me to become a member of the advisory board. And it's not hard for me to give them my time 
effort and money to be a part of the a part of the home. Uh, so, and we do a lot of good things. They co we come together if we have problems with finances, we try to resolve them. If we need a new van, we try to do it. If they have walls they have to repair, we try to get the right people in. If we have electrical problems, we try to work with the sisters. And we are, we tried to, we, we tried in the past, we got all brand new chairs, we got different things that all with the help of the advisory board and the little sisters. But you know, they're an easy show to try to sell. Because anybody who knows the little sisters, anyone who knows this home, and you know, and I told you about this a little bit earlier, a few years ago, when there was problems with nursing homes, serious problems, not very, not very good news. They mentioned in one of the papers, and I think it was the Globe, that the Little Sisters of the Poor in Somerville is probably one of the best nursing homes in the state. And that's a true testament and to the organization that runs it and to the committee that helps advise you. And to the mother and the sisters. I mean, they deserve all the credit. We're just their helpers, but they do the job, and you and we and we enjoy doing it. Uh, we talk about the markets. When you, the little beggar nuns go to the market, they they're giving away their products, and they love doing it because anybody who has any dealings with this home love doing what they do, and that goes for me too. Yeah, it's a terrific organization to support. Gene, I know that you're involved with a lot of organizations here in Somerville, but. I can see the look on, on Mother's face that she really appreciates you and the other folks on the advisory committee. How many folks have you known personally that have traveled through the Little Sisters facility here? Well, when I was mayor, I, I got quite a few people in here providing that they were needy and that they were elderly and that they, and there was room for them in here. Mother, it's a great legacy that you have and a lot to live up to when you get tested right. like that. But that shows the, the idea, the spirit of a family. Gene is part of this family and all the many people who help us are part of our family. And Terrific. We're very, very grateful because we couldn't do it of ourselves. Well, let me say that Somerville is very grateful to the organization and all that you do. Sister Mary John. Sister Mary John, thank you so much. You're going to talk to us a little bit. Mother, deferred to you no, to okay. talk about the fundraising. So the organization is um, financially stable. Yes. We are uh, always grateful for donors, no matter what organization we yes. work for. Yes. I work for one that depends on donors, but if you could, for the folks who are watching this, a little bit about how the organization financially supports itself. Okay. Well, as you mentioned with Mother, we do receive some Medicaid funding from the government, but that's not enough to take care of the residents in the way that we desire to take care of them. Very good care, not neg 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 negligent care, excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, but I think it's mainly the, the foundations and the just simple donors that keep us going with the funds that we need. We meet people at church collections, uh, we meet people just at the home, family members of the residents, they come and see us spread the word on what a wonderful place we have. But we also have several events throughout the year that help us to uh, to I've attended the, the bazaar. The bazaar. Bazaar is yeah. coming up November 10th of this go. year, so mark your calendar. Um, we're looking forward to that. It's, it's a wonderful event. We also have an event in May uh, where we have a large gala dinner. Uh, last year it was held over at the Armory here in Somerville. Um, so it, it truly is a way that we can get to the meet, pe the, meet the people to help us out in our apostolate right. to take care of the residents. And you do a lot of grant writing yourself and a lot of applications yes. to foundations. The foundations. Yep. Uh, that's usually where you can get the larger funds. For instance, right now we have a need for some repair to our roof, so we need funds for, for the repair of the roof. And usually the larger foundations are the ones that can come up with that kind of funding uh, that we need. But on a daily basis, too, we have to feed the residents. So one of the places we go is the Boston Terminal Market, and we have many men there who are very good to us, men and women, who donate fruits and vegetables for us so that we can feed our residents well. Uh, we also go to the Boston, uh, the new Boston Meat Market, so they, they offer the meat for us. So That's it truly terrific. is wonderful how generous everyone is to us to help us 
in our needs. And hitting the larger organizations, I know, fills you know, a lot of your needs, but there's also a way that the individual can help. Absolutely. Every single penny donated to us helps, goes into taking care of the residents and offering good care to them. How about, um, you know, individual needs? Some of the residents may not have family that are close by or the family may not be around mm -hmm. at all they could use individual donations as well. Absolutely, and also another way of donating is, is volunteer time. So people, in the, especially in the area, in the Somerville area, they could come and spend time with the residents, especially those who don't have family members. You know, it's nice to come and play cards with them or get involved in some of the activities we have going on. Our arts and crafts room often uses volunteers to, to help keep the residents stimulated and enjoying their days. Terrific. Terrific. I hope. Um, what's the organization's website where people can go to learn how to donate more? It's www.littlesistersofthepoorboston.org. O-R-G. Terrific. Okay. Sister Mary John, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. here with one of the volunteers here at Little Sisters, Michaela. Michaela, thanks for taking some time. You've got a busy day today volunteering. Mm -hmm. How did you get started volunteering here at the Little Sisters? So I had to do some community service hours for school in my freshman year. Um, basically, I ended up here. It's funny because I didn't want to come here at first. My mom actually forced me to. But long story short, I came and did some hours and now they can get rid of And how, how long has it been? <laughs> it's been about three years. Now. Three years. And um, Mother Maureen let me in on a little secret, but it's not going to be so secret after we finish this interview. You're actually you're thinking about entering into the order of the Little Sisters of the Poor. How does that come about for a young woman? Well, I think that well, I do spend a lot of time up in the infirmary with a lot of um, the sick people, our residents who are the most vulnerable. They need the most help, and I think for me, being able to be the hands and feet for them. It's just the most incredible no thing. There really are no words. It's just so humble. No. And I'd love to do it. Beautiful, it. beautiful. When are you thinking about officially entering into the order? Well, I'm going to nursing school. I'm actually in the process of applications now. I'm a senior in high school. So all my applications are due in about a month. And so hopefully I'll go to nursing school, and then after, after school I'll enter. Terrific, terrific. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a call -in. Nancy, thanks for taking a little bit of time today. How long have you worked, lived up here at the Little Sisters? I've been here about a little over a year and a half. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Are you a Somerville native? No, I come from Salem originally, yep. Massachusetts, and then I moved to Melrose when I got married, and I was there, oh, 60 years. So. Terrific. What yeah. part of Melrose? Well, I was on the west side. West side of Melrose. Yeah, and which is, you know, close to... Uh, Stoneham, close to Stoneham. Beautiful. Yeah, it was a beautiful place to bring kids up. So tell us the best <clears throat> thing about living here at Little Sisters. Well, you know, the best thing that I can tell you is the testimony that if these, my fellow residents give. You know, they keep saying, it's, it's like heaven. It's a safe and secure place to live. Uh, the service that you get is love and care and joy from the priests and the nuns is so life-giving. But what I say, what I say, it's a sacred place of beauty, truth, and goodness. And it's right here in the middle of Somerville, which is teeming with life. And we're just like an enclave of quietude and tranquility. And yet there's a lot of activity. You know, there's about a hundred well, I don't know how many residents there are, but a hundred people that come and go every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just, I don't know, it's an oasis. Well, it gives you it gives you the comfort and joy knowing that you can be active when you want. Yes. And you can retire to your own yes. home, your own apartment when you want. Yes. Right. 
And that's the, and there's tons of activity, which is your choice. And there's tons of spiritual opportunities, you know. I mean, it's so Catholic. For anyone who really wants to be in a Catholic place, this is the epitome. I heard you said the worst part of living here is they don't offer hip hop classes. Really? Is that true? I can't walk. Why would I say that? But they don't. They do. But you know what? We have line dancing. We have line dancing. That's exciting. And there's all kinds of activities here. All kinds. All yeah. Kinds. For everybody. Everybody. It's just, it's just really wonderful. But the, one of the best things to do, because you know how old we are, really old. I don't know. Tell me, whisper. How old are you? I don't have to whisper. I'm 91. Wow. And I said, and so the, one of the best things here is to die here. You get to die for. Mm -hmm. You get to die for. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. There's everybody is so kind, accompanying these people into 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 eternity. It's just lovely. What's the old joke about dying to get into the funeral home? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I knew by your humor I could tell you that joke. Yes, you can. Of course. <laughs> We're so glad you're a Somerville resident. I am too, actually. You oh, are? Yeah, yeah. I am. You can vote here? Yes, I did. I yeah. Am. I can so vote. when I run, will you vote for I me? I will. Well, tell me your name. Joe Lynch. Mr. Lynch. Joe Lynch, it. nice to meet you. You too. All right. What are you running for? I don't know yet. Well, whatever you do, you got my Maybe vote. Mother Superior up here. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Mother. <laughs> mother would probably love it. Never mind. Well, that concludes today's visit to the Little Sisters of the Poor here on Highland Avenue in Somerville. It has been an amazing day. I want to thank Mother Maureen, first and foremost, for allowing us into her facility, into the residences, into the different facilities that we've seen today. And most of all, I want to thank the residences of the Little Sisters of the Poor for allowing us into their home. This is one of the traditional stalwart organizations here in the city of Somerville. I hope you will all go to their website, learn more about what the Little Sisters do here. Thank you all for tuning in. To the staff of Somerville Media Center, once again, brilliant job, thank you so much. To former Mayor Jean Brune, thank you. And once again, to Mother Maureen, thanks for allowing us in. For the Somerville Media Center, I'm Joe Lynch. See you next time. Now Joe, give me a little clap. So that'll be our cue then post that we can. Boom. Have to cut a lot out of that one. <laughs> Boom. I know. Can you take me for a ride? I can, but right, you're going to have to. Hold my jacket. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. You're going to sit? Oh, yeah, I'll sit down. All right, you, you, all right here you we go. You do it. <laughs> Where are we going? How far? Watch How far do you want to go? Thank you. Watch out Thank you for that. That's a big help. I'm going to get down with the bench. I'm helping. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you got license plate, but no driver's license. I never had one. Oh my God, let me have That's the closest I've had. Thank you so much for doing this. You're oh welcome. My God. So, yeah. Oh, the people Except so for good. Sister Mary John, you know, she's trying to get checks from everybody on the film crew. She's very good at that. She is good at that. She's very good. Yeah. That's wonderful. We need that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, my God friend. Bless God bless you, too. Thank you so much. And Anytime you need a ride. <laughs> need a ride. I'm here. I'm here. You are something. Yeah. She is the star of the show. I can tell you right now, you're the best thing in the <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That was fun. I got a ride. I heard. <laughs> I missed it. Okay, now the time. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you're welcome, hon. Anytime. Okay, ready to go.